Hey, welcome back to the channel. This is Dave with Alum House Sound. Today we're going to talk about the routing tab. Hey everybody, welcome back to Alum House Sound. I'm Dave and we are going to take a quick look at the routing tab today. So recently I've gotten a number of questions in my comment section around the routing tab. There's a lot of new people using this X32 or the M32 platform. And although there is some documentation around the original firmware setup where everything was done in blocks, now that we've gotten past for uh, firmware version 4.0. There's not quite as much documentation. You have to look through all of the release notes to be able to find out all of the changes. So hopefully this quick overview will help you out in your routing adventures. And if you've got any questions, feel free to leave them below, but let's dive into the console now. All right, so let's dive in here and start to talk about our routing. Uh, so on the routing screen here, you have kind of two different sections if you look at this. So if we just look at the tabs at the top, we have input, AES-50A, AES-50B, we've got card, XLR. Then we switch over to our patch points, which is a whole different section. So if we keep going now, we have patch points for outputs, for auxiliaries, our P16s, and then the custom user patch points. So we're gonna start off now on the far left, back at the inputs, and just take a look at what all of these do. Uh, the inputs tab, this is the only thing uh, the only section that deals with inputs into the console. Now, the patch points in the user section does have a custom user input section that you could use, but with this, this determines where your, uh, your patches of eight or blocks of eight inputs are coming from. You've got 32 inputs plus your six auxiliary inputs that you can uh, mess with and adjust. And those could be anything from uh, local to AES-50A, if you've got a stage box, AES-50B, if you're running on that channel, you've got card inputs. And if you come down to the bottom, you do have user ends as well. So a lot of flexibility here in this input section. Now the next thing we get to is outputs. Everything else on this, uh, this block tab deals with outputs. So AES-50A, this is talking about your outputs. What outputs are going out AES-50A back up to your stage box? Okay, uh, the next one is gonna be AES-50B. What is going out AES-50B? Next, we get to the card tab. Now, this is what a lot of people are using, whether you are uh, live streaming out of your USB output, the XUSB card. Maybe you are multi-track recording into a DAW and you're, you're recording multiple tracks. Maybe you've got a custom setup where it's some, uh, some sets of local inputs and, and AES-50 inputs or custom routing, whatever it is, this all determines the stuff that's going out your USB card. And then the next one is your XLRs. This is the XLRs that are on the back of the physical console, the physical outputs on the back of this console. Uh, where are we tapping or getting our source from? So if you look over here on the right hand side, uh, we do have this kind of quick overview and you can see that my output one is being fed by Mixbus one, output two is being fed by Mixbus two. These are default settings here that your general outputs are being routed out the XLRs. Let's take a look at the patch points now because the patch points play into kind of what these output settings are. So here, this is where we would actually set up our our output area. So this is patch points. Patch points are different than the physical routing, but this allows us, we have 16 outputs here. If we go down one through 16, this console has 16 output options. And what we can do is we're saying output one is going to be sourced by, and then over here, this is where we see Mixbus one. If I keep going down, uh, I have a number of in-ear monitors that are set up here uh, on the first couple of these outputs. Then we have, uh, in this case, I have a choir monitor that's set up on here. There's a choir group. Then we have Mixbus 9 and 10. Um, 11, you can see 11 is off. Okay, 12 is off. Apparently it's not being used in this scene. 
And then output 13 is being fed by a matrix. I'm gonna assume that this is for a live stream setup, uh, but you can also denote that it's post fader right there. So if we wanted to change this, we could come down here, we could select matrix, and then now we have the ability to have our tap points. We've done a previous video on tap points, but we could set this as pre-fader, post-fader, whatever the case is. If we keep going now, we've got uh, output 14 in this one is, be, is being sourced by the MC, the mono center channel uh, on the board. And then we've got our main left and right outputs. So this is where we can select and denote what, uh, what output is being sourced by what setup on the board. Uh, again, typically we talk that the left-hand side of the board is your inputs and your right-hand side of the board is all of your outputs, whether it's mixed buses or matrix. And so we've got the ability to then uh, here group which output mix is going to which actual output source. Uh, if we go over to auxiliary now, you've got six auxiliary outputs on the back of this board. And this is where you could maybe set a mix for uh, some studio monitors if you had those being used for auxiliary outs. Maybe you've got a mix that you want to route and use a quarter inch to one eighth inch or RCA to one eighth inch output for your live stream, maybe into an ATEM mini. Uh, this is where you would then come down, let's say you wanted to use five and six for your, uh, your, your live stream. Then we could come down here and in this scene, apparently matrix one is a, a live stream mix. So we could select matrix one. For that, we could come down here and we could select uh, matrix two. And that way we would be able to hook up either RCAs or quarter inch to the back of the board and send that through a cable into our live streaming device. The next one is the P16s. I actually did a full length video. I will link that up here in the top right. And this is uh, the P16 outputs. This is where you have 16 unique outputs that you can uh, denote that go up to your P16 in your monitors. Now for us, we were doing uh, some custom routing for our DAW, but you've got the ability to use this like it's intended here as well. All right, the last tab is users. Now this is where we get the custom user settings. This is only in version 4.0 of the firmware or newer. And so you can set up custom user inputs here. You can see 32 of those. You could also come down and set up custom outputs where you could route, uh, route your outputs in any configuration that you want. And so you are not locked in necessarily, if I go back here to the left, on the XLR tab, you are not locked in necessarily to doing blocks of one through four, five through eight, uh, and having them need to be set up as say all mix bus or all whatever. You can come down and choose your custom user outs. And now you can see that I would have mix bus five and six and then two blanks if I used whatever is set up in this user out area. If I come back over to the user outputs, many people right now are using the XUSB card to live stream out uh, and they just need to have their live stream mix go out USB one and two. And this is a great place to set that up. Uh, if you wanted to uh, set up multi-track recording in a custom setup, you could do that here. You've got all kinds of of user inputs and outputs that you can do. A great example that I'm gonna go through in another video is my, uh, is my room mics. And for me, I have all of my inputs coming from AES 50A, except for two that are room mics that are plugged in locally. So here for just a quick second, I switched over to uh, my, my scene that we use at my church, just to show you this as an example on our inputs. We do have AES-50A here for one through 16. Then I have 17 to 32 is a user setup. And then my 25 to 32 is back to AES-50A. So if we look at this 17 to 24, I'm gonna page over to the right and get to the user inputs. And here on the user inputs, if I come down and look at 17 to 24, we'll see that I have this set up as a all the way through here, but then we have uh, for 21 and 22, those are coming from local inputs. So if I go back up here, you'll see that they are local input 21, and that's on the back of this console 
And so I'm taking that as an input. Again, that's for two kind of room mics or crowd mics, if you will, that we've been playing with recently. And so that way, when I look at my actual channels, um, my channels, I don't have to do any custom configuration because I just have selected user ends over here as my inputs. And so everything is taken care of at that point. All right, so there you go, quick overview of this setup and including some little quick snippets of my setup as well. I hope that it helped answer some questions. If it sparked any new questions or any more questions, just put them in the comment section. I will happily answer those questions, try and help you out along the way and get you rolling and running on this console. So that's it for this video. Hit the like button, the subscribe button. If you've got other people that you know that might have these same questions, feel free to share this video with them and we'll catch you in the next one. Peace.